Hi guys, it's Nico and this is the Automation Gym. Today's topic is going to be similar to the last one. We're going to look at the virtual UDP inputs. What are they, how to use them, and what is the difference between the UDP, HTTP, and TCP IP. So without further ado, let's jump into config. So what do we need? Yet again, if we go to the mini server, it's going to be a virtual input. We're going to be receiving information. And in here at the top, you can see here the virtual HTTP inputs that we used yesterday, and then here the virtual UDP inputs. Click on them. And as it is an input, we're going to be, whoa, not Bulgarian, receiving UDP. And as you can see, there's even less information that we need to take care of. Now in here, we have two things, sender address. So where is that UDP packet coming from? And then we have a UDP receive port. So even though we have specified the address, we still need to open a port and say which port we're listening on. Because otherwise, there's far too many ports, far too many. If you look at it as the sender's address is maybe a postcode, and then every single house is going to be that port. There's going to be 65,000 houses, and we don't want to open every single door to be able to find that information that we're looking for. So. When it comes to the sender address, I'm actually not going to put, be putting anything. I'm going to be sending the information from my PC direct to the mini server. And um, with UDP, what else is very, very common? And how do you usually use it? So there's a lot of cameras. Whenever you press the bell, it's going to be sending a UDP command on local network saying, well, there's a call, there's something coming in. Um, there are sensors, devices that also use UDP to send commands. There's a lot of servers that use UDP because when it comes to UDP versus TCP, what is the most important thing for us to know? Now, first of all, UDP is super simple to use. And second of all, if we compare one to the other, I think that's not gonna be uh, the best chart, that one as well. But TCP IP is more reliable because with TCP IP, there is a handshake in the beginning that is sending, hey, I'm gonna be sending data to you and you're going to be receiving data from me. So in the beginning, that com communication is established. And then whenever we send packages, there's a response back saying, yes, I've received it. And if the package isn't received, it's going to send it again and again, as many times as it needs to. With UDP, it's a bit more fire and forget. So it sends that signal out. And then if it's received, it's been received. However, it is much faster than TCP, about 10 or 100 times faster, whatever it is. And in some cases, if communication is good enough, if there's not too much clutter on the network, UDP can be much better just because of how fast it is. And then the other benefit that we do use it for is broadcasting commands. So let's say on the same network, you have multiple mini servers and they all need to receive the same command. Well, with UDP, it's super easy to do. You don't necessarily need to specify where you're sending the signal to. As long as that port is open and then the devices are listening on that port, so I have multiple mini servers listening on that port, I can send a command once, I can broadcast it on the network, and then I can be receiving it uh, on every single device at the same time. So let's go to our receive UDP port. Now on my side, as I said, I'm gonna be sending it from my PC. I've made a little Python script. As you can see, 30 lines of code with a lot of empty space and comments. Uh, I'm going to look at this in a minute. And the port that I'm going to open is 55,000. So let's save this one in and drop it on the page. Well, we actually can't drop it on the page because this is where we're going to be receiving packages, but we didn't say or didn't specify what packages we're going to be receiving. With UDP, there's one cool thing that we have in config. There's a UDP monitor where we can monitor every single UDP packet coming through or leave in the mini server. And then you also have the UDP learn. So if the mini server is listening on that port, and a signal is being sent, we're going to be able to pick it up quite easily and then just use it within config. So let's show you how that works in real time. I think my code is saved. As you can see, this is the destination. It's my mini server's IP. This is the port that I'm going to be sending it on, 55,000. Again, the destination I can be broadcasting instead. I'm going to be showing that later. But if I just execute my code, there we go. Immediately receive that value. So there are two things that we can do with that information. I can click users digital input and every single time that I see that same signal, same command, 
I can trigger something on and off, which is very common, as I said, with like cameras and uh, doorbell rings. And then you can click on the plus in here to add it in. Now, if I simply drop, I'll just call it example command for now, add command on the page, save in a mini server. Because that command is currently uh, just a UDP packet and a digital input, if I press again, well, you won't be able to see it like that because it's happening way too fast. But if I put a count in here, then save in, we should be able to see it. So I execute a code. There we go. One, I execute it again, two, three. And then you can see we are receiving that packet over and over again. If I open the UDP monitor, if I start a UDP monitor, and we go back to VS Code, execute it. There we go. You can see example commands. And as you can see, UDP data is being sent as a hex and then it's being translated to text in ASCII. However, exactly the same limitation that we have with the virtual HTTP inputs we have with UDP, and that is that we can only read integers or we can only read signals that are on and off. Now, when it comes to integers, let's see how we can do it. So if I go to my example command, I already know what I'm gonna be sending. And then there's gonna be a value that is possibly gonna be changing every now and again. So because we're no longer going to be using it as a digital input, we can simply untick that box. And then in here, if you go down here, you can see that it's using exactly the same uh, format or command recognition. So it can recognize a command and it can only look at a specific section of that command. So for example, in this case, I only want to look for that section of the command because on my code site, that is what I'm sending. And I'm just going to be changing this to, to be able to show you what happens when you change it and how it can pull new data in. So from yesterday, we already know that backslash I, maybe go all the way here, backslash I is going to skip that text or is going to look at a specific section of that text and it's going to go after it. So it's going to filter. And then if I go backslash V, is going to take the information that is after that text that we've already filtered. So in my case, what it's going to do is going to skip all of this and it's just going to look at that 75 at the end. So let's click on it. I'll remove that counter so it's no longer distracting. And let's go back. Yeah, that's everything we need to do. Save in the mini server. I'll start live view so we'll be able to see. And now this time around, because it's no longer digital input, but an input in general, an integer, if I execute, there we go. We see that 75 appear in here. So if there is a third party device that is sending zero to a hundred, zero to a thousand or any data whatsoever, and that data changes, we can simply skim through the text or use command recognition. Let's put it on 78, save it, execute. Uh, we forgot the value, we deleted it by accident. Why does it forget? Let's see. Uh, some sample value here. Do you know what? I'm simply going to copy my own text. I'm going to paste it in here. Uh, without the I, obviously. Save in, execute, there we go, 78. So as you can see, we all make mistakes. Oh well. So now it's 78. If I change that value to pretty much anything, I can even put a higher number, save in and execute. That value is received and it's received immediately. If I go 5001, there we go, that value changes. So in the future, I've already prepared this to be able to receive UDP signals because from the mini server, we can also send out but I'm going to show you that whenever we start talking about virtual outputs and how to use them. Now with command recognitions, you can somewhat look into sending text because what we can do, if we look in here under special characters, we can look at the number or we can look at the information that's coming to and you can represent it in the hex value. 
So for example, if the output is true or false or something else that is similar to that, if it's T, that is going to have a specific hex representation and then we can pick basically what data is being sent. However, I would say we can leave that for a different video because it's way too much for the most common use cases for UDP. Now with our information, I'll quickly jump in VS Code and explain what we have in here. Now, very simple Python code yet again. We're only using one library and that is a library that comes in Python already, that is sockets. We are targeting the IP of the device, but again, as I said, we can broadcast. So in here we can go to all addresses and then a specific code that we can change. We are using UTF-8 encoding to send it just so, well, this is basically what we need for UDP in our case. And then this is the value that we're sending because we're executing this command, which is sent to UDP. If I am to copy it, let me copy it. I'll put it in here again. I'll put, I don't know, 10. And then I'll put 15,005, for example. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it because I think it's gonna happen way too fast. However, if you go here, UDP monitor is open. And now I'll execute both of them back to back. Let's see again. Yeah, it's happening way too fast to actually see it but this is one of the benefits of having the UDP monitor. We'll be able to see that two different commands were sent, 15, well, 1,505 and 10, 1,505 and 10. So even though it's happening super fast, too fast for us to see it, UDP is still able to handle that communication. So thank you very much for watching. I know it's been a short or brief one. Please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next and up till next time. Bye.